All right, it is 22 June 2022. Today I'm just going to go through some uh, something different. Let's just go through some top headlines and uh, just give an idea of what's going on out there. Crypto rigs are off. I was mining a little bit earlier. I kind of mine the GPUs in the off hours, like uh, at night until the till the uh, noon, and then I'll shut them down for power savings and uh, just the heat buildup. Because again, I, I do not have an external shed or a garage uh, to put these uh, rigs in. I am fully CPU mining, and that's pretty much breaking even. I do solo mine on the CPUs. Uh, which I'm hitting pretty good and just to keep my head above water. Well, having said that, let's jump into it. Uh, what do we have? Bitcoin 20,000 holding steady and Ethereum at 1,000. It was up higher a couple days ago or a day ago, about 1,200 and dropped back down. Same with Bitcoin. Uh, that is what it is. So let's just jump, keep this short and sweet to give you all an idea what's going on out there. Not shilling anything. I don't sell any products. I don't, I'm not that big of a tuber. I just do this for fun. And to uh, basically log my journey, my uh, little hobby here, if you will, just so I have it documented versus uh, writing it down, right? It's just easier to pump, pump out a quick video, put it up there, archive it, and then refer back to it in a couple of years. Say, oh my God, Bitcoin was 20000 Now it's at 200000 Wow, I wish I would have bought then. Or it might be, uh, wow, Bitcoin went to zero. Boy, it was at 20000 in June 2020. I should have sold. <laughs> It, it, it's all what it is. No one knows the future. Anyway, let's rock and roll. First, the profitability, which is abysmal. Abysmal. And this will dovetail into some of the articles I'm seeing. Oh, my God. 0 0.01. 1 cent. 1.3 cent USD for one mega hash. Not looking good. And, of course, the time's up. The difficulty bomb is up, etc. Let's see if I have that chart. Yeah, look at that time. 16.34 on the average block time. It was at 14.5 a day or so ago. Not looking good. It's gonna just going to be hard to get rewards. Yeah, Ethereum is a, it's a love-hate relationship with those guys, man. I don't know. What a mess. All right, let's go. What's the first thing we're talking about? NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 GPU boost clocks may approach 3.0 gigahertz. Uh, the new rumors point to the RTX 4000 flagship graphics card possibly boasting 2.8 gigahertz boost clocks, making the NVIDIA GPU one of the best uh, for PC gaming. I don't care about gaming. Uh, to me, it's a waste of time. I did a lot younger days, and I regret it. I should have been out bettering myself, focusing on uh, learning new things and uh, building my network up, my friends and my uh, net worth, instead of just sitting playing games. Uh, that's just me. Do what you got to do. Uh, but again, will this card be good for mining? That's a good question. Of course, any of these bigger, newer cards you hope would be more efficient, but uh, you just do not know. They're saying it is a uh, shaping up to be an absolute monster of a GPU. Uh, could boast significantly higher boost clocks. And uh, let's see, what do they say something about? Oh, okay. They're talking about uh, the new power, how can the um, how can you handle this? It'll likely power a top tier RTX 4000 cards. This puts the powerful pixel pusher specs just shy of seeing the, X, uh, the RTX 3090 uh, by a massive increase of 50%. Let's see. All right. Yeah, there's talking about there was something here, but I can't find it exactly. Yeah. Uh, that said, you'll probably need to equip your gaming PC with one of the best power supplies on the market as NVIDIA RTX 4000 GPUs could be particularly power hungry. So right there, it's bad enough with GPU mining as it is with the energy costs. Summertime, energy prices are increasing for the economy's crash and everything's crashing. Everything's going up in price, diesel, electricity, uh, food, everything. Uh, so yeah, I don't think this card is going to be good for GPU mining. And yeah, something just to look at. It's just to keep this on your radar about what's coming out. Uh, and it'll go into the other articles I'm going to pop up here. So yeah, I don't know. If you're buying GPUs now, it's kind of foolish for GPU mining. I would not be throwing your money away. Just wait until see what happens, especially with this horrible Ethereum merge. Ongoing delays, ongoing delays. And i just sick of watching that. All right, let's jump into this. Uh, let's see. What was the best, best one? All right, this might work. The uh, crypto crash is sinking GPU prices as mining profitability plummets. 
Yeah, we just saw how the profitability has plummeted. Like I said, increasing uh, electricity costs is causing some to just turn the rigs off. And summertime heat, whether it's in your basement, your garage, or your house, or whatever, it just it heats up the building. Unless you have a shed. Uh, but then you know, are you going to drop like a couple thousand bucks on a shed and not try to get that money back ROI? ROI is important. People say it's not. It is. Uh, just it's a hobby. It's a hobby. But you're spending money. It would be nice to make money back. Not in 10 years, but the way it used to be within a year, you could ROI some of these cards, but not anymore. Uh, yeah. What's going on here? So they say, oh, gamers rejoice. Yeah, whatever. While crypto investors look for the bottom to the ongoing meltdown, the cost of graphics cards has steadily decreased. Yeah, steadily is the key word. It hasn't dropped dramatically uh, amid the ongoing crypto market crash. GPU prices dropped 15% in May, and we, uh, we've we seen similar 10 to 15% drops. Yeah, I've seen that too for the past several months. I've been monitoring Newegg, of course. Is, it seems to be the best one I monitor prices at. Because you can go and put all these cards in your shopping cart, save for later, and that save for later option. And basically, when you bring it back up weekly, you can see, oh, it dropped 10%. Oh, it dropped 10%. But again, they're still holding at high prices to me. I would never buy a card right now. It's just not worth a waste of money and electricity. I'm not turning them rigs on anyway, because like they said, profitability is down. So there is that article. Um, yeah, they're saying like, like this, like in 2020, uh, the uh, 3080 Ti cards were out of stock everywhere. And they were selling for twelve hundred dollars. Now, uh, let's see. There was a thirty eighty, which once sold for scalper prices of a thousand. Now they sell for six fifty on eBay. And miners who want to start mining cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum today may have to wait two years to break even on their investment. That's what I was just talking about. But also, Ethereum may go may go to merge. Nobody knows proof of stake. So uh, yeah, there is that. I uh, just want to mention that because people wonder, should I, should I get into this now? I don't know, man. It's just not worth it. Not worth the risk of the juice isn't worth the squeeze right now to spend that money unless you really want to. It's your money. No one's going to tell you what to do. But just look at the trends. Look at the sign of the times and uh, prices are dropping. So just hold off. Hold off to the end of summer, especially after merge of Ethereum, whenever that happens, August or September, whenever they do this stupid thing, uh, GPU prices will fall through the floor. And uh, the uh, basically the uh, MSRP will be the high price versus now where MSRP has been double or 80% more. Just wait, wait, wait. If you really want a card, just wait. Plus the new cards are coming out like we just saw, the 440 four, uh, series and then maybe this uh, NVIDIA 70 series is on, on the horizon as well. Or pick up yourself a used 3090, 3080 for gaming, whatever you want to use for video graphics processing, whatever you need, man. Whatever you need, just wait. My advice is wait. All right, where are we going now? Let's bounce over. Here we go. This all kind of ties together. I just saw all these articles today and said they all have a common theme. They're kind of flowing. You know, things are going down. People are selling. People put a lot of money into this stuff, and now they're not getting their ROIs. $15 billion with a B. Global Ethereum miners spent 150% in 18 months. Yepper, I was one of those chumps. Yepper, I spent a lot. Uh, but I did use retail bots. I gladly and proudly admit that I learned a lot. It was a whole new uh, ecosystem, tech to learn, spend some money, joined a cook group, learned how to buy these cards, but I didn't resell them. I kept them. I put them in my rigs. That was the only way I was going to get cards at all. There was no Best Buys near me, no, uh, no other targets, nothing really close by me. And so to me, I needed to use the retail bots and Amazon, all that crap. And I, I did well. And I got them for at least MSRP, nothing more. Bought a few on eBay, uh, not knowing what I knew at the time. Probably spent more than I should have on some 1660 supers, but I was an idiot. That's how you learn. All right, Ethereum miners alone have reportedly spent around 15 billion in graphics cards in the last 18 months. This figure does not include GPUs that are used for both gaming and mining by players trying to recoup some of the cost of their equipment by mining their playing cards. Yeah, I mean, gamers are cool, right? They play games. I don't personally do it, like I said. But when they're not playing, they mine. And they made me a couple bucks. They were making a few bucks a month to pay off their car down the road. And that's smart. That's smart economics. Now, again, it may not be cost effective based on electricity costs. Yeah, and your mom's yelling at you for heating up the room. All right. Uh, they spent about 15 billion GPUs over the past 1.5 years. All right. Uh, they, uh, cryptocurrency experience had a dramatic price spike, prompting millions to buy GPUs to mine Ethereum. And make some quick cash. Yeah, the whole ecosystem of crypto mining is changing. 
obviously we're in the bear market now. When people in the economy, some of these government retards say, uh, we're in for a recession. We are in a recession. It's here now, guys. The bear market, everything. Come on, get with the program. All right, uh, blah, 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 same old stuff. Ethereum has switched to a proof of stake model. Not yet, this is article's wrong. Now that Ethereum has switched, they haven't switched yet. GPUs miner will no, uh, GPU miners will no longer be able to mine the cryptocurrency. Developers claim that this change will come in August, although it could be delayed once again. All right, that's their plan is to switch to a proof of stake model. Uh, they say August, but it, it, it'd probably be delayed again because if you watch these Ethereum dev Zoom meetings, it's pathetic. There's no alpha chat in there leading this uh, ship. They're all just a bunch of uh, kind of little little uh, beta engineers running around with no clear direction. There's some uh, dissension amongst the troops on how to proceed, and you get a sense of egos in that. But again, no real alpha Steve Jobs guy, front office guiding this ship, leading it to a, to a deadline, to a product release, marching the army in the same direction. It just seems like a pure, total shit show. And it, uh, I may be wrong, but I've seen this tech stuff for years. I've been in it. And I can tell right away, oh, God, this doesn't look good. And uh, yeah, I don't know. So the thing is, if you can mine Ethereum and make money, do it. And But get paid in Bitcoin. Do not hold Ethereum. That's my advice. It's going to go to zero. It's just a, it's just a total joke. Uh, yeah, not financial advice at all. But that's my experience. I may, I may, I, I'm, I'm kind of fence sitting a little by saying that now. I may just hold the little two Ethereum I hold. Because again, I don't want to move it. To an exchange, spend 500 bucks to move it in the stupid gas fees or whatever it costs, 40 bucks, just to say, I'm just going to hold it. And uh, it's just not worth the juice, uh, this whatever. The juice is worth the squeeze to move it and spend all those fees just to dump it at a low price, especially when I mined it at a higher price. I'm at a loss now, like everybody else. All right, what else do we got? We did that one. And I think the last one, this is just for fun, just to kind of give you the, uh, I'm not a trader, I suck at it. Everything I do, I say do the opposite. Whenever I buy something that tanks 40, 50 percent, it's just amazing how that works, right? I'm so sick of it. I wish I'd I wish I'd actually hit a home run once. But again, all right, if you this is the way to look at freaking trading. Zoom out, especially on crypto, from the thousand foot level, zoom out to thirty thousand foot to get a bigger, longer term picture of where you stand today. If you invested one hundred dollars in Bitcoin gold, Ethereum Classic, and Dogecoin, Dogcoin, whatever the damn thing's called, in March 2020, here's how much you'd have now, blah, 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 this stupid article, stupid article, let's just go to the cut to the chase, right here, winner since March 2020, here's how much $100 in each of the following cryptocurrencies back, back at the bottom of the US market in March 2020 would be worth today. So this is just 100 schmackaroos. Uh, $100 uh, put in Bitcoin gold at March 2020 is now worth $268.83. Ethereum Classic, which we're hearing a lot about lately, is going to be uh, $327. Uh, so not too bad. And of course, Dogecoin, amazingly enough, uh, if you put $100, bucks, you would be up $39.55. Again, Dogecoin went up to 60 cents, I think, when Musk was pushing it on Twitter. And uh, it's it's such a joke coin because, again, there's no foundation in it. But, again, whenever Musk tweets, uh, it may do something. And the following paragraphs hints on that. Uh, what's in store for Doge? It's no secret. Tesla, Musk, antics related to Dogecoin on Twitter have resulted in massive price fluctuations for the meme crypto in a, in a year when the broader cryptocurrency market has fallen sharply. It remains to be seen if Musk tweeting about Dogecoin can sustain further gains in the near term. It's just a whole highly speculation and a joke that uh, it's just gambling right there. You're just spinning the wheel, hoping Musk will tweet about it. And uh, if he ever takes over Twitter and cleans house, gets rid of the woke mentality, and maybe he will institute Doge as the currency of Twitter. But that may be a few months because he's got to get in there and take over, fire all those uh, woke uh, socialist lefties and uh, basically get it running as a proper business, making money. Isn't it all about making money? Because again, they are public traded and a lot of people have stock in the company. So if they want to be an ideological company, then don't be a public company. I mean, you're going to make your shareholders broke, which they are now. 
So yeah, they're in trouble. They got to sell and uh, Musk has got to clean house, make it a, uh, make it an efficient running ship. Uh, yeah, there we go. Just some headlines today, 15 minutes. So nothing fancy, nothing fast, but again, here we are, Bitcoin, here's the price breakdown today. Again, I am so against altcoins right now. I think everyone has learned their lesson. And then 2018, altcoins hit 85% drops. And uh, wherever Bitcoin goes, the altcoins follow, but some actually will disappear. You won't be able to trade them anymore on exchanges and that. It's almost just worth just getting Bitcoin, man. It's the gold standard for crypto. It's uh, digital real estate. It's a store of value. Uh, that's just the way it is. And you can buy all these crap coins, but uh, I don't know. People made money on, but then that gets into day trading. And uh, most times day traders lose. You may hear people say, I made 10,000 bucks off SHIB or Doge. Well, they don't tell you about the 20,000 they lost trading uh, XRP or Cardano. You just can't believe any BS on YouTube, on the internet. And that's why I make these videos. Use your own critical thinking skills. Listen to this for entertainment and uh, do your own research, which means read articles. Write down what's the pros and cons for you. Do the work. There's still like some idiot shilling crap or talking about stuff on YouTube. Uh, buyer beware. Don't be a sheep. Uh, go forth and use your brain. All right, I'm out, guys. Little headline updates. Nothing else going on with crypto. I'm just kind of on Zerg pool now, CPU mining for the hell of it. Trying to decide whether to turn some, uh, maybe some of these 6600 XT rigs on Ethereum to see what I would get. Uh, or maybe Equihash or something. I don't know. Just playing around right now. It's kind of fun because you learn what works. Zerg pool to me is a great learning ground, a great sandbox to play in, to try your stuff, try your CPUs, your GPUs, other stuff. I'm not touching ASICs. I'm not invest uh, investing that money in a dedicated uh, piece of hardware, especially when everyone's shilling them on other channels. I get a little nervous and I back off and say, wait a minute, all these companies are now you know, incentivizing other channels to push their stuff because they have stock and they probably been mined to death on rigs and farms and those guys are just unloading them and they use the uh, influencers to push them to clear out their stock so they can uh, make and recoup some of their money because crypto's down everywhere, man. Everyone's feeling the pinch. Big Bitcoin miners are selling their Bitcoin to pay off their debt. And like I said earlier, some of those smaller outfits are going to go out. The bigger guys, the bigger well-run farms will sell Bitcoin also but to buy the guys going out of business because they see the future and the value of Bitcoin. Does that make sense? Do you see what's happening there? But uh, again, people are unloading their ASIC inventory, especially the Ethereum stuff, because it's going to go proof of stake. And they're trying to basically flip that over through the influencers. And I hope some, some guys on watching YouTube will buy them up, you know, at high prices. And it's not a, don't do it. Uh, then you got the Dogecoin miners and stuff like that. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. And this is a trial run I could do on a Dogecoin and then have the option to return it. But when you pay in Bitcoin for these things, good luck trying to get your money back with buyer protection. You always got to look at the details. And uh, some of these, most of these firms, when you're buying these ASICs, only take crypto as payment. And that is very sketch to me. I mean, I'm sure they're reputable and they'll ship it to you. But what something happens, uh, yeah, you can't call Visa and say, I need my do a, a, a chargeback because I never received what I got or they shipped me the wrong thing or it's broken. I don't, I don't receive any response from their customer service. You're, you're hosed. So buyer beware. It's a, uh, it's a wild west of crypto. Just beware, be cautious. Uh, head on a, what is it? Head on a swivel, looking around, keeping your eyes open and don't listen and believe everything you hear on the tube. All right. I'm out guys. Take care. Talk to you later.